The speed of light is a phenomena that has been known since the 17th century. Since then, we've been able to drill down to the precise speed of light in a vacuum of 299,792,458 meters per second. That is, of course, incredibly fast. At that speed, you could travel around the Earth seven times in one second. And believe it or not, you don't actually need complicated apparatus to measure the speed of light. And today, we're gonna do just that with a microwave oven, a ruler, and a chocolate bar. Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to another Saturday session with me, Simon Dan, back in the studio again today. It's raining outside once more, typical spring here in the UK. So before we actually conduct our experiment, we need to go over a little bit of wave science first. Here, we have a wave, and we know a few things about it. The wavelength is the distance covered by one full wave cycle, so peak to peak or trough to trough, and we measure this in meters. Frequency is the number of full waves that pass one point in one second. We measure frequency in hertz. The amplitude of the wave is this distance here. Now that is the maximum disturbance of the wave from this central position. And of course, waves have a speed. And in the case of all light, this speed is the speed of light. In a vacuum, that speed is almost 300 million meters per second, as I've stated earlier. But here on Earth's surface, in air, it is around 80,000 meters per second slower than that which really in the grand scheme of things is nothing. And there's a nice relationship actually between a wave speed, its wavelength and its frequency. And it is this. A wave speed is its frequency multiplied by its wavelength. And we can use that formula to work out the speed of light. But for that, we need our microwave oven. But first we need to understand how microwave ovens actually use microwaves to cook our food. Let's imagine that this wave here is a microwave heating our food. The microwave oven passes microwaves throughout and cooks the food due to the microwaves transferring their energy into the water and fat molecules of the food. This makes them vibrate and in turn increases the temperature. Cooked food, voila. But how does it do that? Well, the peaks and the troughs of a wave are called the antinodes. And the points where the waves pass that central point are called nodes. And it is the antinode points, the peaks and the troughs, where the microwaves have the greatest amount of energy. It's why the whole thing needs to rotate in order for the food to be evenly cooked. But if we remove that rotating ability of the microwave oven, we should be able to use it to figure out the speed of light. All we need is a microwave oven, this ruler, and this chocolate bar. Over to me, in my kitchen. Okay, we've got our chocolate bar here, really big chocolate bar. We've got our ruler and we've got our microwave oven. Now, what I've done is I've turned the plate upside down inside so that we don't have a rotation because we don't want it to evenly heat the chocolate bar. We want it to just go straight across. So here we go, we'll pop it in for about 15 seconds. Okay, so that's 15 seconds now. Let's have a look. It's a big bit of chocolate, we're gonna try a bit longer. Okay, it ended up needing about 45 seconds. I think it's because of the size of the chocolate bar. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so I'm just looking along and seeing where it started melting. So I've got one here, and I've got one here. So I think, no, it's here. Okay, so we've got one here and one here. So we're just looking at the points where the chocolate bar has started to melt. So at one point here and one point here, this is where the antinodes have got the most amount of energy and they've transferred the most amount of energy to the chocolate bar. So what we're gonna do is gonna measure the distance. We're gonna measure the distance to between those two points. And we've got 6.4 centimeters. 6.4 centimeters. So now it's time to do some maths. Right, now that we've done all that, we can start calculating. Okay, so we now know that the distance between the antinodes is 6.4 centimeters, but this is only half a wavelength. So we need to multiply that by two to get our full wavelength, which gives us 
eight centimeters, which of course is 0.128 meters. And once we've done that, we can then use our formula to figure out the speed of light, which if you remember, is a wave's frequency in Hertz multiplied by its wavelength in meters. Well, my microwave oven, like so many others, uses waves at a frequency of 2.54 gigahertz, which is 2,450,000,000 hertz. And as we've already figured out, we know the microwave wavelength is 0.128 meters. Let's multiply them together and we get 313,600,000 meters per second. Now that's actually not too far away from the actual speed of light value, an error percentage of less than 5%. I'm really happy with that, considering we were using a microwave oven, a chocolate bar, and a ruler. Well, there we go. What do you think of that? You can do the exact same experiment at home too and get results as well. I'd be really interested to know if you do do them. Pop a comment below if you do do it. Let me know what value for the speed of light you get and how close it is to the actual speed of light. Thanks so much everyone for watching. This has been another Saturday session with me, Simon Dan. See you next time.